right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined from Phoenix, Arizona by Carter Wilcoxon. How are you doing, Carter? Uh, John, I'm doing absolutely phenomenal. Thank you for asking. <laughs> And uh, Carter is part of the CSI Financial Group and has been helping uh, top advisors in the country break down the, break their own production records for years. Uh, and you you work at the, on a lot of different things, but one of the things is estate planning. But you have a a process and maybe a way of looking at estate planning that most people are not that familiar with. Carter, correct? Well, uh, absolutely. You know, and, and there's a lot of uh, mystery uh, involved whenever you even hear the terminology of estate planning. And for, mm -hmm. for way too long, the access to getting information has really been limited. But what has worked in our favor uh, with what's happening in the certain, you know, on the ground right now with coronavirus, COVID-19, whichever way you want to look at it, um, what's happening is that a lot of the prospective clients that we assist through the advisor network that we work through, um, mm -hmm. they've been thrust into embracing technology, digital transformation. So we were already well positioned because we have a online uh, done for you process, proprietary process that gets all of your affairs in order as we um, say to our, our prospective clients. Uh, we can get it all done from the comfort of your own home, the safety of your own home, all online. And that's what really has helped to thrust us forward in this digital transformation age that we had already embraced almost uh, three years ago now. Yeah, and it's, a, and it's an interesting point there, because one of the things that we've been talking about is that the, you know, the pandemic has really brought into sharp focus digital processes. And that a lot of a lot of organizations had either paid lip service to it or had kind of kicked the can down the road and said, yeah, we'll deal with all that later. And then arrived the pandemic and suddenly it's like, oh, dear, I can't really run a business without digital processes. Maybe now I need to uh, address them. And it's funny you say, because when most people probably think of estate planning, they probably do think of sort of sitting around the dining room table with some guy and pouring over stuff and doing it maybe later in life. Um, but but um, what you're saying now is no. This is something that you should be addressing now. But also that you can that you can use technology to enable this and to make it a much more efficient process. Well, uh, and and those who have been enlightened on our entire process, that's the end user clients, if you will, and then the advisors that we work with um, to help them and assist them. What they have realized is they say things like, oh my goodness, this is like the easiest thing ever. And where have you been all my life? And if I'd have known it was this easy, I would have done this, you know, however long right. ago. So yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. So, so first of all, whenever you take the words and you break them down, estate planning, mm -hmm. what a lot of people don't understand is that an estate is simply everything you own. Yep. The planning part is how do we plan for the eventuality of what's going to happen for all of us when the, the when the appropriate time comes how do we plan for that estate we have a mm -hmm. proprietary process and a team and a network that takes all of these things from beginning to end and then into the future and beyond for those that whenever we do ultimately for all of us leave this earth we put a plan in place that is ever changing and when those changes occur which is why we have a formula called our 90 and 90 formula where we can get 90% of your estate plan done in 90 minutes or less. And a lot of the clients ask the question early on, well, what about the other 10%? Here's the other 10%, John. The other 10% is that one constant that everybody that's listening to this and everybody we work with is gonna have to deal with for the rest of their lives called change. Yeah, the yeah. genius of our platform is that in real time, under the control of the clients, they can make those changes with the team that ultimately or originally implemented the plan in the first place to make those edits and updates and changes when laws change, when digital transformation happens in another way. So that is really the, um, the, the overarching theme of what it is that we do to help our advisors, to help their clients in this area. 
Yeah, because I mean, most people probably think estate planning is a one and done thing, you know, just get it out of the way, do it, you know, file it away. And, uh, and when the time comes, dig it up again. But like you say, I mean, there's, there, you know, life is dynamic at the best of times. And we've seen it be slightly more dynamic than we'd like recently. But there's a lot of change. Would you also say you have, um, you have a multidisciplinary approach, right? So you're bringing a lot of different resources to bear into this process. Yeah, so what we what we realized early on, because we've been working through the advisor network, uh, mm -hmm. like me, myself, when I formed CSI Financial Group, but even prior to that, for almost two decades now. And what I knew is that this area of expertise, advisors, number one, they don't want to have to learn like a new skill. So yeah. all I did is I went out and I found all the team that was necessary to still allow the advisors we work with to not have to feel overwhelmed, to understand that there's a team that has all these different disciplines to help in this entire assistance, if you will. And what ends up ultimately happening is that when we put our advisor partners in the center as the quarterback and we surround them with this team that we bring to them, it really helps to elevate the client experience and create what I call professional contrast against everybody else out there. Because all the advisors we work with, they're all after the same clients and all after the same assets. So using this approach has helped to differentiate them in a truly meaningful way. And then, but I understood that there was no way they were going to have to figure this out on their own. So I just decided I'll bring a team and we have a team of over, uh, with over 250 plus years of experience in all of these necessary disciplines that are needed to be successful for ultimately the client at the end of the day and make the advisor look good during the entire time. Yeah, and it, and it's and it's amazing because what you're outlining there is very much what we would consider the model of work for the future anyway. Because regardless of whether you're in your business or, or any other business, there are a lot of there are a lot of expertise and things that need um, experts for, but you don't need them all the time, and you don't need them for the duration of a project. You don't need them as a full-time employee, but you need this expertise. And this is why we've seen the explosion of Upwork and other, you know, contract places where you can get contract workers. So, as you say, at the end of the day, the real secret sauce is the ability to bring in these resources as needed and understand what do you need permanently and what do you just need to bring in and out as necessary. Well, I couldn't have said that any better. And, you know, outsourcing is a very, very popular um, thing. And all I did was I just sort of outsourced, but everybody has, and this is probably the most important aspect of it. Everybody that's on the team and the, this, this team approach and multidisciplinary team approach, everybody has a vested interest in the success of the advisor that's in the center. So they know that what they do for the end user client is going to be a direct reflection upon the advisor. So they have this vested interest and when they win, the entire team wins. And that, that, that old adage of the rising tide lifts all ships comes into focus on a regular basis, time in and time again. Absolutely. And so explain a little more what, what being able to leverage technology and digital processes has done to the experience. Like if you can maybe um, contrast the the traditional experience with the experience that you now deliver? Yeah, so um, this will probably be a two-part answer to this. Mm -hmm. So first, let me sort of take you back in how we started going down this path in the first place. And it all started with working with an advisor who was doing these traditional ways of helping with estate planning. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear the terminology revocable living trust. And, mm -hmm. and I, want, I want to make sure that, that what's understood in this podcast is that what we do not do is we are not here to sell trust. We have what we call the estate plan portfolio, which makes up a revocable living trust, but it's mm -hmm. so much more than that. It's really helping to get all of your affairs in order uh, with all the planning. But he was involved in this original process where they were doing a lot of this estate planning, educating the clients and everything. But what, would, what was happening is that there was a, this disconnect between the network of um, attorneys that are typically involved in that and putting the documentation together. And it, it, that was antiquated and doing like word docs. That was, that was digital transformation to them. Yeah. But what ended up ultimately happening is that led me to the CEO and founder of integrated trust systems, 
who, as I have said many, many times over, Gary Lofsgaard, who has, is a genius and way ahead of his time, I was introduced to him and he is the one who built the software and the technology to be able to do all this stuff that our advisors could ultimately tap into. Once I realized how powerful the connectivity was between and, and how we efficiently changed that old model of paper documents and put this thing in this like big leather bound portfolio and then it's ever changing. We needed to make sure that the client was in control. The advisor was right. in the center. And then of course we have our, uh, our attorneys that are part of the network that come in and they kind of sort of, you know, do the applicability and suitability review, but it's all done online. The genius of the software is in, in Gary's, um, his, proprietary platform that he has whenever I found out just how efficient it was when I found out just how comprehensive it was even though it's efficient because uh, a lot of times you think comprehensive oh it must be sure. painful when I found out and I realized just how efficient cost effective easy the connectivity was I asked him I said is there anybody else in my space that's using this to which he said well we've tried from time to time nobody took it my benefit that I had as a startup, where we're celebrating six years next month, by the way, no, um, fantastic. Was that I was looking for something exactly like this. When I connected all the dots myself, I realized that we can take this antiquated model, this old traditional way of doing it, really bring in the digital transformation age with the technology, all mm -hmm. online in this cloud safety cloud environment, and really leverage all of those technologies that we have but you still need the people to connect the, te the technology. That'll never change as far as I'm concerned. But we've already been successful, even in the situation that we're all involved in, where we can't do these face-to-face, -face, yeah. which is traditionally how it's done. We've been onboarding, if you will, prospects or clients that learn about our platform through the advisor network from their home, from the advisor's home, and it's all done you know, automated and, and systematically with the technology. So that's what I mean by leveraging the technology. Mm -hmm. and, and in many ways, it probably makes the experience that, um, perhaps a little more, less stressful as well, because I mean, if you're doing a lot of stuff online and, you, you know, you're doing it, you know, systematically and all of that, it's a lot different than, as you say, when you're sitting down and you're going through papers and you've been asked questions and, you know, it's because it, it can be a daunting process for people. Any, anything that's outside what you normally deal with is a daunting process. Plus, you're talking about something that you don't really want to think about anyway. Well, and, and to that point, here's the thing that we've discovered through our educational events. And that's how we start the whole process. Mm -hmm. that we give free educational events for clients to learn, really. We help to demystify what a state plan yeah. is. But they fall in one of two categories, these prospective or current clients. Either one... They've done something in the past, but it was painful. And they're like, I don't even want to think about going through that again, but I know I need to make some updates, which leads mm -hmm. me to the second category that they normally fall in probably 90% of the time is the procrastinators. And it's not because they're procrastinating because they don't want to think about it. They're procrastinating because they inherently think and conventional wisdom says it's going to be painful. Yeah, We've taken yeah. the pain out of the entire thing. And what we help, clients to understand early, early on to manage the expectation is that you don't have to know everything right now because of mm -hmm. this change that's going to occur. You don't know what the future holds. The genius again of the system and the platform is that when those changes do occur that are inevitable, we can do this by having the, the connectivity of the team that brings us all together very, very cost effectively. So um, that that's a, something that I wanted to convey yeah. to whether it's a prospective client of mine or a prospective client of theirs out there listening right now that we've taken the pain out of the process. Yeah. And I think that's a, and, and I think that's a great, as I said earlier, I think that's a great example of how digital processors processes are changing things for the better and taking, taking, as you say, tra processes, traditional processes that appeared or maybe often were kind of painful and, and leveraging the efficiency of technology. And that means then when you take all of that, uh, all of those kind of, um, processes and you digitize them, but then it allows you to really focus more on the expertise, the high value stuff. I mean, I couldn't have said that any better. That, that's exactly right. So once, and this is what I talk about, the 
creating that professional contrast mm -hmm. for our advisor network. Um, once we solve this peace of mind that clients who have been procrastinating because of the fear of the unknown or have feeling like they have to know everything right now, that allows us to be able to now do some of the really specialized planning that we can do, whether it's financial or taxes, uh, mitigating those types of things, and really bring in additional specialists when it comes to other planning strategies that we can now be able to incorporate. And the clients that we work with, that our advisor partners, as we call them, that network that they work with, they are so super thankful that they were helping them take care of this foundational approach first and foremost, and then we go to the next stage. In fact, a lot of my advisor partners will have a conversation with clients who sometimes will want to start talking about their finances, and, and they're like, whoa, hold on, hold on a second, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, we have to pump the brakes a little bit. Mm -hmm. We can't talk about anything in the future until we do this foundational approach first. Without that foundational approach, all of the other things that we may do that you may or may never take a recommendation yeah. on what I do, whether that's assets that I manage or whether that's um, you know, life insurance or annuities or REITs, whatever it is, you may never take one of those recommendations ever, but we have to do this first. Whatever we need to do in the future, that sounds awesome, but we've got to do this first and foremost. And what we've seen is that actually helps to build that bridge of trust and it really helps to break down those walls of mistrust, typically that is associated with the financial advisory space with regards to how the feelings of clients out there feel about them. Because a lot mm -hmm. of them uh, have this understanding that, oh, well, you just want to you know, get in my pocket and, and yeah. do something with your money. It, that has been one of the biggest um, catalyst and, and one of the biggest messages that we give on the front end for our advisors that you have to do this, prop, this process properly. But if you do it properly, you will then create uh, this professional contrast. And when we set out, what we really did to set out was to do three things better than anybody else. Number one, elevate the client experience. Number two, create professional contrast. And then number three, and to the point I was getting ready to make, is to competitor proof these very best ideal prospects or clients that you're working with or want to work right. with in the future. So yep. just follow the process. Everything works itself out. Yeah, and I, lo I love that idea of the fact that, yeah, when, when you get engaged, and it's not just in financial services, it's in many things, you know, on, as a client, one of your first defense mechanisms you think is the minute you sit down they're going to try and upsell you every service under the sun right and what yep. you're saying is you're actually saying no let's just do the basics first let's get all of this in order and where we go from there it'll unfold itself mainly or whatever but it's not from the get-go you're going to go in and you say oh well i'm going to do my state planning you say oh yes but you also probably need this and you probably need that uh, w once again, we learn this ourselves, like we've stubbed our toe on many, many mm -hmm. things as we continually refine this process. So, uh, and we've got it down to pretty much, a, I mean, a science now, if you will. So that is the biggest part that I have to convey to an advisor who, and the reason why, you know, that's, that's just not, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the way that clients feel on a regular basis for no reason. They feel that way because a lot of the clients that we are trying to work with, our advisor partners, as we call them again, um, they are very transactional because, yeah. and I get it, and I share this with them. Look, I understand in order to monetize a relationship, mm -hmm. some sort of transaction has to happen. I get sure. it. And there's a bit of leap of faith involved whenever you get involved with our advisor partner platform. But with all that being said, what they what we have learned is that if you just follow the process that you'll stop that idea that the client that you're talking with and if you but if you go down that path it reinforces their already you know apprehension on talking to a financial advisor in the first place whenever they test them on what we call the client interview process after mm -hmm. an event has happened so they test them with hey well i wanted to talk about my ira or i want to talk they don't really want to talk about that. What they really yeah. are doing is they're testing to see if you're any different than the last guy or the next guy. Mm -hmm. So 
again, this leap of faith, as I just mentioned, if you follow the process and if you understand that what this platform does is takes you from a transactional advisor to a transformational advisor, and right. that will grow your practice. That's fantastic. Listen, Carla, that's a great way to uh, to end. So um, all of Carla's information would be in his contributor bio, but please do tell people how they can learn more about you and learn more about your platform. And if they wanted to get involved today, what would they do? Yeah, the, uh, that's fantastic. Thank you for that, John. Um, you can go to my website, simply uh, www.csifg.com. CSI Financial Group, obviously, is what that stands for. Uh, you can go there. There are tabs that you can learn about our team. You can learn about, um, it's also client facing. So clients can go there and see what the client solutions are, the advisor solutions are. So we're all encompassing. They can simply go there. And then my calendar link to be able to get mm -hmm. onto my calendar is right there. You can schedule 15, 30 or 59 minutes uh, with me. We can have an initial 15 minute conversation just to see if this is something that might be right for you. But here's what I know. And, I, and I'll end with this. It all begins and ends with client acquisition. We are laser focused on helping our advisors in their quests for that initiative. Because right. uh, without clients, it's really tough to grow your practice. We've solved that problem. They just have to find out more by getting on my website and get on my calendar. Fantastic. So I would advise anybody uh, out there who's thinking about this, uh, get on Carter's uh, calendar, have a chat. Uh, it's never it's never too early or too late to do this, right? <laughs> that, well, th there's no doubt about it. And, and some of the things that you'll discover whenever we educate you and enlighten you on, on really what estate planning means and why it's so, especially right now, important in the digital age, mm -hmm. um, there is a terminology called Rufata, which I won't get into, but it's something that everybody needs to hear about. Um, so if you want to learn about Rufata and why that in the digital age that we're all living in, if you have an email, a Facebook, a LinkedIn, if you have an online account at all, and you are not addressing the Rufata issue, um, then you are missing the opportunity uh, to be able to take care of some yourself and your prospective clients. Fantastic. All right, listen, Carter, this has been great. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, John. Yeah.